Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this week's or this month's edition of Métis Coffee Talk with your host, uh, uh, Keith Henry here, uh, President of the BC Métis Federation. Uh, very happy to be with you for this Thursday, December 21st. Hard to believe we're only a few days away from Christmas, and it feels like uh, this year went by exceptionally fast. And um, tonight I'm solo. Um, I have lots of videos of uh, our friend and our vice president, Renee Therian, uh, who usually joins me on the show, but we've had technical issues. So we've decided to uh, run with some some uh, uh, pre-recorded uh, uh, tunes from our recent Métis Christmas party. But uh, absolutely, we will um, we will uh, certainly share that and uh, make that the enjoyable part of the entertainment tonight. Um, but, you know, I just I'm coming to you again for this month. There's lots of updates to share with members. Hopefully, uh, folks uh, uh, are maybe not so much focusing on on this kind of stuff to, with uh, with Christmas around the corner. But you know, for those that are joining me this month, I just want to say thank you for being on this monthly show. Now, I am going to share obviously uh, a lot of information with the federation tonight, and I'm going to just sort of, to be frank, I'm going to just jump right in. And there's lots of news and information from the BC Métis Federation to share with you. Uh, and of course, if many have been on our website at bcmatey.com, you'll know that it's been certainly uh, very, very uh, packed. Um, so what do I want to start with? Well, it is Christmas time, and I want to thank our friends, uh, George and Terry Goulet, and many many people know them as very strong Métis historians uh, that live here now in British Columbia with original genealogy from uh, Manitoba. Uh, but they, you know, they put together a piece on what was called the historic Métis Christmas. And I just thought, you know, I'm going to share it tonight with everyone to start the show off as we're only a few days away uh, from, of course, um, Christmas. So I want to say thanks to George and Terry, and I hope they're having a nice evening tonight, and hopefully they're able to watch, you know. So, uh, so it's basically, uh, Terry had written this a few years ago, George's wife, Terry, um, and the article simply just, I'll just quickly paraphrase some of the article. The historical Western Métis people love to party, feast and celebrate whenever an opportune occasion presented itself. And many did. Like people themselves, these activities were amalgam to a French, uh, Scottish, Irish and Indian or First Nation roots. Festivities uh, consisting of good food and drink, rousing music, energetic dancing, lively singing and jovial socializing would usually start in the early evening and continue with until the early morning hours. During this merrymaking and, and continuing to this day, the Red River Jig, pardon me, and the fiddle were at the core of Métis identity. Um, the primary source of music originated with the Scottish winters of the Northwest Company. In the 19th century, the Christmas and New Year period were, were the main was the main festive season in the Red River with activities extending over 10 days to two weeks. Those away from the Red River on the winter buffalo hunt did not, didn't miss out on celebrations. An example given by Norbert Welsh in The Last Buffalo Hunter. In his narrative, Welsh said that the New Year's 1865, uh, at New Year's, sorry, 1865, they had a good time. We would dance uh, the old time dancers and the Red River Jig, reel of four, reel of eight, double jig, strip the willow, rabbit chase, tucker circle, drops of brandy, and all of the half breed dancers. They, there were always lots of fiddlers. Nearly every man could play the fiddle. Then we would go to another family. I tell you, we had a regular good time. We had lots to eat and drink. This festive, this feasting lasted about 10 days. Well, that's a lot more than I do for Christmas. I can tell you that. Um, the prominent Métis entrepreneur James McKay was also born at Edmonton uh, House in 1828 and died in 1879 at St. James, uh, Manitoba. Invariably, gave a fun-filled New Year's party at his home in the Red River Settlement. You know, I won't read the whole article. What I just want to say is that thank you, Terry, for always uh, sharing, or well, both George and Terry, for sharing that made to history. Um, for many of us, uh, including our family, uh, where the Henrys were, we were in Prince Albert, you know, it was really, you know, comparative to this in the sense of it was a Métis kitchen party, but it wasn't 10 days. It was usually just a few. And it was definitely lots of fun, lots of food, lots of uh, fiddle music and, and and jigging. And I just honestly thought a lot of families uh, did these sorts of things all the time. I didn't realize it was something special for, for us Métis people or half-breeds as we were, we were more calling ourselves when I was growing up. 
anyway, so just, to, you know, thank you, George and Tara. I hope people get on the website at bcmeeting.com. Have a good read of the article to understand a bit of the historical perspective on how, you know, Métis people themselves, uh, I guess, defined and celebrated uh, some of our history and traditions of Métis culture. And this was some of the stories of those individuals, and of course, some well-known names in the article. So again, thank you, George, and thank you, Terry, that uh, was is very, very, um, I guess, uh, in, important uh, for us. You know, um, there's lots of other information I want to share, but, you know, I, I also really want today to be um, sharing a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the celebration, the Métis fiddle music. And and so what I want to do just before I get into another sort of topic, I want to just jump right into some 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 fiddle music from our friend, uh, Vice President René Therrien, and he was with Mr. Furlong on guitar. And we were recently at the Nova Métis Heritage Association out in Surrey, the, our partner community there with several families just this last week. And I have to say, what a nice event it was. And Rene, you know, played fiddle for the Métis families and the, and the young kids that were there and everyone's had a great time. So I want to share some of those videos and I'm going to jump to one of those videos right now. And so, you know, I just want to say thanks again, Renee. And you, you saw Mr. Furlong on the on the guitar there. And it was just it was a really, really nice event. You know, uh, there was about 50 uh, individuals there um, and it was many kids. We handed out presents. We had a great turkey dinner. And I just want to say congratulations to the Nova Métis Heritage Leadership, Harlan Coles, uh, of course, Carrie and her husband, Roger, and others that were in the room. It was just really appreciated. I also want to say a special thank you to our team, Jeannie Cardinal and Daniel Desjardins, who really helped the staff to help organize the event, just, just get things in order, buying gifts for the kids. Every single, we had about 15 kids there, and every single one of those families and those children Right from ages, you know, I think the youngest was probably two, maybe a bit younger, to, you know, 15, 16. We had one quite a bit older kid. And uh, everyone, we made sure everyone left with a gift. And, you know, I know some families were struggling. And it was just a nice way for us to show the community, our members, uh, how important they are. So, again, it was a great event. I want to show you one more video. And we'll do a few more of these uh, throughout the show. But let's do one more from that that evening. Uh, and that was Orange Blossom Special by our friend Renee, by the way. That's one of my favorites he does. But uh, the, the family certainly loved the music. Let's do one more uh, before I go into my next topic.
again, that was just another one of the great songs from from Renee Theory and of course Mr. Furlong. And uh, it was just a what a what an awesome evening. And I just you know I can't thank those individuals enough for the work that they did. Um, you know, just just sharing culture. You know, and you saw the photos, some of the photos, of course, uh, from the event itself. And uh, you know, it we had a just a, that was a there was people sort of. I've, I haven't been at many Métis events, to be honest with you, in a long time where we've had to actually turn people away. We felt terrible. We only had food for about 50 and we ended up having to turn some families away, but we made sure they got some gift cards. Um, you know, so again, it, it's just a testament to, you know, when you when you show the community support outside of politics and you just, you know, just make it about culture and giving back, which is what the Federation was doing with our partners at Nova Métis. You know, we we all collectively invested into gifts, into the food for the families. We provided some gift cards for food security for families that were in need. And we did it in a way that was discreet. So it didn't, you know, families didn't have to feel sort of, you know, that, 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 you know, uh, you know, some people are very proud and they don't want to admit they need help. So I just want to say I'm, I was just really thankful to our, our whole team for making it such a professional and culturally sensitive event from a Métis perspective, you know, and I uh, just... Uh, just sharing some of the pictures. We had some amazing elders here. And, uh, you know, I just, I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, there's, uh, when you get on the screen, it's, uh, you'll see Earl here was having a very good time. And uh, he was, he joined us as some of the leadership from the Federation from around the province. Of course, we we flew Renee down as our vice president. And uh, uh, yes, he's a great fiddle player, one of the best in the province for sure. And a very traditional Métis fiddlist and uh and uh for our fiddle player and uh he was awesome so thank you for the team to all of us for being there and earl just thank you again for your leadership and i know uh we were all just very happy to be at the event and it just this is about the federation values for those of you that are watching and wondering what we're all about we just we're trying to lead by good examples and not saying we get it right all the time but boy these families these are we have we represent about six thousand members in the province and growing all the time and I'm and we just this was a great event like people really it was nice to see family out it was nice to see people just enjoying enjoying themselves in a good way. Now, having said that, you know I also want to celebrate some of the other uh, Métis events that happened uh, around Christmas. We at the Federation we we supported Nova, but we supported a number of our partner communities. And so I also want to just to give a big shout out to the Métis Association of Central Okanagan. Uh, you know, the leadership there had a, you know, a Christmas party. We provided some funds to our partner communities that were having an event. Um, this is a, this is a pretty neat cake that they got for uh, Christmas. So, you know, congratulations to the leadership at, there. And, you know, we certainly appreciate uh, the work that they've done and, uh, and just promoting culture and just really, you know, just trying to connect the community uh, with our membership across the province as well. And just want to say how much we appreciated the work they did that. So we were at Nova earlier this, uh, this week. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the Métis Association of Central Okanagan had their event, uh, not also this past week. And just quickly, I want to also just bring uh, uh, awareness that we were also, uh, for some of us, we were up in, uh, in, in Terrace only uh, uh, with the Skeena River Métis Community Association also uh, very recently, or I guess two weeks ago, almost hard to believe it's almost been two weeks ago that we were up uh, in that area. And, uh, you know, to the, the that was an amazing event. It was, uh, I think it was December 11th or 12th, 11th, I think it was. Sorry, my dates, everything's running into itself. But again, I just want to say a big shout out to the leadership up in Terrace. They had over 100 people. Um, they brought Métis Sant in. And I know some of you would have seen this on our social media posts and whatnot. But just again, what an amazing event. The kids were just, they just loved it. And, you know, we provided support to to the community organization. They in turn bought gifts. We, we did put on a great meal for everyone. It was free to attend. Uh, they, you know, they had such an amazing turnout. And again, you know, thank you to, of course, you see our vice president. This is his home, his home community, not only as a provincial president, but our vice president. He's also heavily involved locally. And of course, we have our our elder representative on our provincial board, Elizabeth there, and she's also a leader in Terrace. And, you know, you see Helen uh, right beside her and many others that in the in the local community there, just, uh, you know, contributing and putting back. And I have to say, this was an, a, a huge event. I didn't realize how many people, but they had about a hundred people there and it was lots of children and they loved it. And I, I just love the fact that the, these are the things that the BC Métis Federation is proud to support with our partner communities. And I think that, says a lot about the work that we do as, as an organization. So, yeah, so those are some of the ongoing things. Now, 
I want to share another video um, that we that I'm I'm proud to um, show today. Now, just switching gears, some of the work you know, many of you know um, that uh, that the BC Métis Federation, along with a number of other Indigenous communities, have continued to be involved with the Trans Mountain Project. And I know there still continues to be public concerns and 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 whatnot. And and we've done our best to support what the majority of our members wanted to do, which was around procurement and employment as it relates to some of these projects. But I'm very proud today, and if you haven't seen it, we have posted it as well. Um, the BC Métis Federation is one of the successful Indigenous communities that's been able to engage and consult through the regulatory process on behalf of our members and our partner communities in a really healthy way. And, you know, I just want to say to everyone, this we were very we were honored to be asked by this by this particular project to be part of their Indigenous storytelling series. And what they did is they interviewed different communities. And it wasn't just the first, it wasn't just Métis, it's First Nations. You see the Simk and others, they're involved in the project and they were part of the storytelling. And I was very proud that a video came out about including us and, and, and the positive work that these projects can do. You know, I know we talk a lot in, in, in the public discord right now about, you know, all sorts of uh, ways that, uh, um, you know, what uh, environmental impacts are having, but some of these projects are very important for our community. So they did the video and I, and I do want to spend, I want to show it to you tonight because I think it's an important video and it really showcases the work that we did. And I want, we want it, we want our members and our partners to appreciate. And I want to say how much we appreciate Trans Mountain and the work we've done with the government of Canada on engaging in a healthy, respectful and a responsible way for our members. BC Métis Federation is a Métis representative organization and so all together we represent about 6,000 Métis people in British Columbia. We fight for Métis rights of those people within British Columbia, offer economic development opportunities for Métis people and their companies. Economic development is so important to any enterprise, um, whether it's Indigenous or non-Indigenous, because it grants you the opportunity to fund yourself. You don't have to rely on federal institutions or, or any government institution for funding. So our industry engagement team has started off with one just a few years ago, and now we've built a team of up to seven individuals. The success of this team is critical for us, you know, particularly on the procurement side. You know, we've created procurement and economic development opportunities with a number of partners that I know uh, that we proudly boast. Uh, they help us realize revenues to reinvest back to communities. When Trans Mountain Expansion representatives reached out to us, it was more around just sharing information. And we quickly realized that that wasn't enough tools for us to actually help our members understand the project. So, you know, after about a, a handful of meetings, we said, look, we need to actually have support from you in the way that provides us capacity to go talk to our communities without you in the room. And we need the information and we need to have it in a way that we can share it and you're gonna have to trust us. And that was really important to us. And fortunately, Trans Mountain Expansion representatives and, and leadership agreed with that approach. And so that gave us the ability to go talk to our members throughout the project corridor in a way that we knew we needed to communicate with them. So after about two years, we had our team reach out and pull every single one of our card-carrying members that live in the Project Corridor, because we said they're the most directly impacted. They will shape the direction we go on this project. And I believe, because of all the due diligence we had done with information and holding forms and trying to get people information that wanted to hear it, we ended up with just about 70% of our members voting in favour of us engaging and signing on to participating with the project. We've had amazing economic success on the Trans Mountain Expansion Project. So when I came on in 2020, we had three contractor partners that were that were that had been with us previously in the, in the organization. I've now brought us to 33. Many of these are Indigenous owned and they're very high capacity contractors. I only partner with the best. I only partner with the guys with the ISNs, the Avitas, the cores, um, of course with good ratings, and with the capacity to fulfill services on these major pipeline projects. 
This was the first major project to really put Métis people on the map in terms of being meaningfully engaged and, and, and participating in the benefits. Hundreds of, of Métis people in the province now have had employment opportunities with various partners on the spreads as the construction has gone along. That wouldn't have been there had we not engaged in an effective way. The revenues we're now realizing through many of these initiatives, including Trans Mountain, are really what are helping build our entire nation's capacity. We have numerous community events every year. We do cultural investments in every single one of our partner communities. We're providing new additional Machif language sort of camps. You know, we even have created something called an emergency assistance program. That's exactly the kind of things that our members wanted us to do to help fill our mission and our mandate. And that's the things we're going to continue to invest in. This project, in comparison to any other company or pipe, major pipeline project that I deal with, they're light years beyond in terms of Indigenous engagement and inclusion. The Trans Mountain Expansion Project was life-changing for many of my Métis contractors. This was the first time they were able to partner with their home community. This is historic for Métis in BC. It's historic for Métis all across Canada, but uh, very proud of what we were able to do on this project and I know it would not have been able to happen without the support of the Indigenous Relations team at Trans Mountain. Of all the work I've done with many proponents, many projects in British Columbia, the leadership's been sincere, they've invested in the ways we've asked, they've supported us and the results speak for themselves. So I hope, um, you know, I think that is a very powerful video. I thank Trans Mountain for, of course, uh, including us. And it it wasn't just Métis in there. There was First Nation videos as well. And But it's nice to see that Métis have that recognition. And I, and I know these are sometimes often challenging projects, but we've, you know, we've listened to what members wanted, as we said in the video, all the way through. And we've done what we can. And, and I hope our members and our partners understand that that's the way we help create revenues to invest in culture and things like emergency assistance and, and many other things that we're very proud of. Some of the very uh, initial screenshots I showed you, like investing with NOVA and, and Terrace and, and the Métis Association of Central Okanagan and, and other events that aren't there, but I know communities held things. You know, we're doing what we can. I want to say a hi to everyone online as well. I see there's a number of you chatting on on the show tonight. Just want to say Merry Christmas to, to several of you that are commenting. It's good to see Debbie Marion on here and, and of course, Earl and Betty or and Francis Fisher out of Surrey and Cindy, I know, in, uh, in Clearwater or the North Thompson. I know you had a great community call uh, event as well uh, for Christmas, and we're very proud of the work you're doing there. And everyone that's uh, commenting online, if you have any questions, of course, I'll try my best to, to pay attention. It's hard to do uh, run the video at the same time, but certainly we appreciate that. Anyways, I just want to say I hope you got a good sense of how the work we're doing and and um, and, and 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 what we're trying to do to help our members. Um, I just wanted to bring us uh, maybe let's just take a break from that for a second. Let's go back and do another Métis video from our friend Renee Therian.
that's a short clip of Renee, and uh, hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, you know, just thought I would take a break in some of my uh, commentary, and hopefully, again, I really hope you enjoyed that. I want to find one that Renee does. I should have labeled these a bit easier for myself so I could uh, actually pull it up easier. There's a couple more that I'll play throughout the show, but definitely one that I'm really looking for is uh, Renee does this plucking of the of the fiddle, and I, I love that song. And uh, But anyways, we'll... I'll work our, my way through finding out which video that is discreetly as I'm trying to do the rest of the show. Um, now, again, um, uh, going to just quickly uh, the um, uh, uh, quickly show a couple other items uh, from, uh, of course, uh, from the website. If you haven't been following along uh, and some of the information we did, uh, we did just um, I just want to let people know our office hours. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen this already. It was put out in our newsletter as well. The office will be closed it's actually closed today and and until january 3rd and uh we it's a way for us to just provide the staff a little extra time off a lot of people are do a lot of overtime we can't really pay overtime we don't have a lot of extra resources for that sorts of things so what we do every year is we give the staff a few extra days off at christmas time so i uh, guess some of us are watching and we're dealing with emails and all that uh but uh, for the most of the team we will will not be back in the office till january 4th so but by all means if anything is urgent we we are still on top of things and anything to any of you watching tonight if something comes up please don't hesitate to email me at k period henry at bcmatie.com i'll do my best to uh, of course uh, get you into get you information now i want to go quickly a little bit into the newsletter um there are some other stories that i want to bring up in the newsletter itself um i just there is some important i guess in, uh, pieces that are coming up fairly quickly um and uh, uh that i wanted to share with them with all of you tonight we are still just want to make sure that everyone online is aware we are running the spark Métis program uh, in Vancouver. It'll be starting January 15th. We've been putting a lot of communications out. I really encourage you, if you know anyone that's between the ages of 19 to 30, is looking to sort of look for other sort of, it's a skill building and employment support program. We have a couple spots available. Uh, we, we, we are working with YVR uh, for the work placement. Uh, it's his work experience dates February 26th to May 4th. Um, we, uh, pardon me, uh, uh, it should be the end of March. It, uh, we'll have to update that. Sorry, there was, a, there was an update to that one piece. Sorry, it should be the end of March. But anyways, uh, we will go from January 15th to the end of March. Uh, we definitely need to, um, um, we would love to have you get involved. Uh, if you know of anyone that wants to be involved in the program, uh, if, if people do the, the actual, it's five weeks of class and then the rest of the time in the work placement at YVR, uh, we still have a couple spots. So this is paid. Uh, you'll be paid at uh, basically minimum wage. There's a completion bonus uh, uh, plus a, uh, uh, a perfect attendance bonus. So there's $250 and $500, so $750 extra if you complete everything. And then, of course, uh, and then you have perfect attendance, you get even more. So we've tried to really incentivize this. So please, if anyone's looking for an opportunity, we still need to um, um, get people involved. For If you want to get information, go to sparkmatee.ca and there's uh, you, it'll take you to that that landing page. And away you go, you can just simply pop your, your resume or your information in to apply. We, please pass that around. We want to make sure we get a great student cohort because YVR is looking to hire every one of the students if, if they go through the program and they do well in the, in the work placement portion. These are these are uh, really good. Uh, these are working living wage paying jobs are not minimum wage jobs. These are going into, uh, you know, the mid to high 20s starting. So uh, these are, you know, a little more uh, reasonable uh, living in, in the lower mainland. So please, if you have people that want to get involved, please have them apply. Uh, we also want to remind members uh, we are we've got a number of things out right now around food security. We have seen, a, unfortunately, a, an ex, and a significant number of requests from families and members across the province. Uh, uh, you know, just the cost of living is going up. And I just want our members to know we're very sensitive to this. So what we've done with our emergency assistance program is the board, uh, our leadership group in December, made an adjustment to the program to enable the ability to help food security. So... It's not a huge amount, but it'll be $100 uh, per full member. You have to be a full member to apply. Uh, you have to you just go through the emergency assistance program on our bcmatie.com website. So you go to programs, you'll, there's an emergency assistance program tab. You just click on it and fill it out. And uh, we can, we'll get that out to you as fast as possible. Uh, we've, we've done two things on this. We've helped 
directly to members individually that are applying and we it's confidential we don't share names in here so please know that it's very confidential and the other side of it is we've we've provided some money to all of our partner communities uh two thousand dollars per partner community that if they have families in need that that they have some ability to help them over and above our current capacity investments we make to them um, it's just a it, it is becoming a theme, unfortunately, and we're hearing it more and more. So please, if you if you need help, if you know of people that that are 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 requesting assistance, like please, you can either send them if they're a full. Well, first of all, they've got to be a full member, though. So um, make sure that and if you're just a partner community member, you haven't fi finished up the provincial membership of the Federation, you can go to your partner community. So. Just let us know how we can help. Uh, we have a staff member that's on call that's be de dealing with all those pieces. We also want to remind you that there's other health-related expense programs through this. Um, there's a QR code you can use on your phone just to go to the landing page or emergency assistance program. So we help food security. But remember, we also help health-related expenses. And I, I just want to say at that, that Nova party, um, there was the Flett family. And just want to say we were so happy to help. You know their family's gone through some recent challenges, and and uh, you know without getting too far into it, um, the father has had several unexpected strokes, and so we were able to provide a bit of support using this program. And it was thank you to the Flets for their kind words to me uh, at the Christmas party because those are these aren't just money we're just throwing into the wind. This is to help people in a tangible way. And in his case, we helped with uh, basically a, uh, a wheelchair, and so. We can help with, we've been expanding up to about $3,000 with health-related expenses maximum. So it's a one-time thing we do, but just please, again, people, if you know folks that are needing it, prescription assistance, whatever it is, think about it, but you have to go through the process on our website and you have to be a full member. So just a reminder to that. Now, other pieces on the website. Um, I'm very, very excited. Our team is getting ready for a major coastal conference, our second one. Um, I encourage you strongly. This is, I think it's almost full. Um, we're about 80 individuals are can attend the coastal conference. It's at the Pinnacle Hotel at the Pier in North Vancouver, January 20th from nine till five. You know, we provide, you know, lunch, we provide food services during the day. It's free to attend, but you have to register and you have to be on the list to get in. Um, if you're thinking about it, uh, you know, our, our board will be there. I'll be there. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. I found the last coastal conference and the work that we're doing at the Federation to support, you know, water monitoring and, and all these things, exceptionally important. And I, I just want to say how proud we are to do that kind of work. And our members really care about water protection. We know it's not our territory. We get that to, uh, I know many first nations wonder why we're involved. But we also feel that responsibility to contribute to, you know, supporting our waterways, the, the, supporting the environment around us. And so we've been doing beach cleanups, we've been doing all sorts of stuff. And I think there's about 100 water protectors that we've got now. And the work they're doing is amazing. And I saw the power at the first coastal conference uh, in Langley a few months ago. So I encourage you, uh, we, we, we've had so much, we only, the registration at the first coastal conference, 60, we filled it, we had to turn people away. So we've now expanded this one to 80 and um, please come, you know, we'd we'll be talking about key topics related. And I'm just, we at the Federation just want to know how to, how members continue to want us to support this kind of work. And um, there's lots of new programs and initiatives that you'll find very exciting. And I found it, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a biologist, I'm not a marine biologist, but I found myself very, um, leaving it very passionate about, you know, contributing to water protection in any way that I could. And, um, you know, I just, I think it's very important for us to be as educated as we can on why these, these topics are important anyway. So yeah, if you want to learn more, go to coastalwaterprotectors.ca. They've got their, their program website. And yeah, the, this is from some photos from the first one and you'll see some of our team there. And it was a great time together. And, you know, and um, I just want to say how incredibly uh, uh, proud our, I was of, of seeing it. And, you know, as, as I think about that, I, I'm going to just stop for a quick second there. Um, you know, I don't know if many of you saw, but so what do we do as coastal water protectors? You know, and I have to say, I was exceptionally proud of our team it was on in early december you know this is the kind of work our team does and some of you may have seen this already on our on our our website but let's look at what our team did and um there was a there was a spill one of our metis people contacted us they contacted a bunch bunch of agencies that 
you know, are like the, the Coast Guard and other municipal agencies, some other Indigenous organizations, nobody responded when there was a fuel leak actually in, in Coal Harbour. Who did? Uh, our, some of our team did with our spill kits. And, and I don't know if you saw this, but I'm exceptionally proud of our team. This is what we did. And, and our team jumped into action right away. It's not that we think we're, we're not being paid to do this. This is just what we feel is our social, cultural, environmental community responsibility. And I'm proud of our team. This is the kind of work we do at the Federation. And I want to just show you this clip. to make contact with anyone else that was able to help you today for this? Well, I contacted, I spoke with a lady from the environmental response from the city and they said the Coast Guard was looking after it. I went to the Coast Guard and they said that they're investigating and assessing and that the city is dealing with it. So I, they, they kind of went back and forth and so I figured I could just use my own initiative and uh, assist also. Perfect. And you came across our page and seen that we had a spill kit initiative? Yes, yes, that's yeah. right. So what can I say? You know, I just want to say that that was exceptionally, um, I was proud of that work that our team did. I thought it was amazing to see our team jump into action like that. And you know, Angel and Zia and everyone, they like just thank you for the work. And I think, you know, people like to talk a lot about environmental issues and they like to get on when there, when there's a camera there and uh, there's media there or there's politicians there. But our team didn't, they just went into action. And our spill kits, part of the work we're doing with that whole coastal water protector work we're doing, it, it you know, was that was action. And I'm just really thankful and proud of our team and when our team when we realized we had an opportunity to do something good like that we just our team did it without any hesitation and I just want to say how much I I truly am, am proud of the work that this organization does and we should all be proud you as members everyone online tonight should be proud of that so let's take a quick break from the the the, the uh from from that uh and let's just do let's do one more let's do another video uh, of our friend Renee Therian from the Christmas concert. And I'm going to, I really hope I pulled up the right one this time. If not, we'll just go with whatever I got. Okay. Well, I didn't get the video I thought, but there was some great, uh, the kids dancing. Um, those were young dancers from the Waichia uh, Métis Community Organization. You know, they're a, they're a group uh, with a Métis Nation BC organization. And you know what? We were fine with that. And we love the fact that they've got young kids dancing. You know, we're so, it's funny because uh, so many of us I know, including myself, are a bit intimidated to jig and these kids just get up with no fear and they just jig and they were doing, you know, the belt dance and, and trying to, you know, but it's fun to see that. And the, I just hope these young kids stick it out. Like we've seen so many other young ones come along over the last number of years, but you know, it was just really nice to have that. And I just want to say how much uh, we appreciated that, that group. I want to do one more song because I feel like I got to get this one song that I love of Renee's. So I'm going to try no, this isn't it either. And I'm trying to pull it up without 
you know, making a complete fool of myself online tonight. And I, Lord knows, I probably don't have it here. And, and okay, I'm just going to go to something else here because I, I'm, I'm frustrating myself with all these videos and I should have labeled them. Uh, there's a specific one I want where Renee plucks it. So let's go back to, um, um, for a moment, let's go back to the, the newsletter. I want to speak a little bit of, so that, of some of the other things that are in the, the newsletter that some of you might have seen out uh, just uh, this week. Um, you know, Karen Andrews, I know she's online tonight and we're very, she's our industry employment coordinator. And, you know, she works with our team like Brad uh, from Brad Drew, Drew out of the island. Uh, and, uh, you know, we appreciate the work they're doing. You know, to our members and friends watching tonight, just remember that we are we our job board is always hosting major opportunities. And there's, you know, there's a mining potential, traffic control person, security um, operations center operator, mobile security officer, client service manager, mining essentials. There's a number of training opportunities and job opportunities. And so these are just some of the current openings right now. And there's many others that we just don't put all of them. Again, go to bcmatey.com forward slash job dash board, you know, and um, you, you get on our website and you'll, you can just work your way to the, to the job board area. And there's many of uh, these opportunities. So, you know, Karen, thank you for the work you're doing. And I know you've helped about 130 or so people this year uh, find employment. And, and we just say that we, we've taken the approach that will help all, all Métis people, regardless of uh, whether they're just our full members or not. Some of the programs when we invest money, our board is, our leadership group has made it clear. We're the, when we directly invest, you're going to have to be people that have actually completed the genealogical process that we require for a provincial card. Uh, others, we just provide opportunity to the community at large. Well, and I'm getting real-time info. So so Karen has corrected me. It's not 130, 130. It's 166 to date. Well, that's great, Karen. We're very proud of you and keep up the good work. And I say that to all of us. And I know it's not those individuals are from all over the province. And, and thank you for the work you're doing, Karen. We're all very, very proud of the work that you guys are doing as a team. So next item on here, again, I remind people, you know, we've we, we've left now the Métis and BC. I've shared with you on the last month's show uh, about the, the, the public campaign we did around providing that historical information with the story map and you can you can explore the history of the Pacific Northwest and the Métis uh, history specifically in British Columbia. Uh, we are getting tremendous feedback from from partners and, and people looking at this as this is a very this is a significant academic resource. You know, just uh, you know, we encourage you. Uh, this is another just uh, um, we try to keep this as just academically focused as possible to continue to correct this narrative that Métis were just recent, you know, recent last few generations newcomers to to British Columbia. Well, for, for me and some people, for sure, that's true. But it is we continue to say that's it's completely that narrative is incorrect. And we have a long standing history of our of our ancestors and families that have been here since the 1800s. So, so we just can, we hope that you'll go if you want to take a look at it. This is a great resource for all of us, for all of you tonight. If you haven't looked at it, check out metisbc.ca. Now, uh, final thing I want to share on here is, uh, you know, the our French Machif language uh, 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 stories K to 12 curriculum. Uh, you know, we're looking for feedback we're looking for you to check out the survey we would love we've created a survey for the French Machif language curriculum and I don't know if anyone saw but we just put out an amazing uh December newsletter for the Machif language and I'll show that shortly but I just I want to just stress in the in the in the newsletter please you know get involved do the do the survey give us feedback you know we know there's different dialects of Machif we've chosen the French Machif because that was what our members told us to choose when we surveyed folks about two years two three years ago uh, it's been a few years now I forget the exact timeline uh, but absolutely we're looking for your feedback and our director of Machif language Jeannie uh, Cardinal and of course our vice president Renee Therian are the two key leaders in our organization to bring this forward so yeah they're looking for insight and input so we really want you to to, to most definitely have a look at that. Now, I just want to take a break from that for a second because that brings us out of the newsletter section. But I hope people have seen, you know, our our organization's work towards the French Machif language, and uh, I'm very, very proud of the work of this uh, of this team to do to the to to share uh, the language uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 Machif newsletter we did in December. You know, we uh, continue to get a lot of you know questions about who we are and our language and, and, and that. And, and this is a very 
um, relevant for me when I hear a lot of the French mature speakers, it's my family specifically. That was kind of what I recognize in our family from my grandparents and great aunties and uncles and that. But in here, what we tried to do is provide again through the first newsletter of this series, we're going to continue this on a regular basis with a very Christmas focus, um, uh, some, some key words, some key content, try to help you at home continue to develop your Machif language. So we've got the actual K to 12 curriculum. Well, not a lot of members are going to go through the curriculum word, you know, word by word. But I think what we're trying to do is add this as a useful tool for you at home to, to think about it. So, you know, we've given some information and, and, and this is, uh, I want to thank our team, uh, uh, you know, uh, led by guidance of sort of what I call elders. Uh, I don't think Earl wants to be called an elder, but, you know, Renee, Francis Fisher, Earl Belcourt, um, Many of us will know who those individuals are soon. Um, we are developing a new online glossary to help you learn French Machif. So you'll be so you'll see a new Learn Machif uh, 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 online glossary that'll be available very soon. So that's a new tool that's coming up. Um, now again, the survey in request was in this one as well. We're looking for that Machif language survey, but you know we tried to use some French Machif words for the winter season, right? And so. You know, Christmas, Noel, you know, uh, uh, and you can see the different uh, family for family, you know, uh, 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 boy, my French, I, my machif, I'm scared to, <laughs> I'm scared to say some of these, even though I kind of grew up with a, listening to it. Uh, uh, but the point is, uh, you can all try this at home. And we really, we really want, we really want you. So I'll, I'll try and say this. I know Jeannie's probably going to laugh. And so is Renee when they, when they hear me muddle some of these words, but you know, uh, uh, Christmas Day, la jour, la jour de Noël, and uh, you know I think that's the way I would have probably heard it. I think in my family, or Christmas tree, ain uh, no, ain no, no, uh, Noël. So I'm not sure I'm saying that right. I know Jeannie, please don't give me a hard time. I'm sure you're going to write something on the Facebook uh, response here right away, but I'm doing my best. So the point is. I'm learning it. We should all be learning it. This is part of who we are as a people. And I know there's different Machif dialects. We know that. But this is one that, uh, oh, Earl told me I'm right. Thank you, Earl. <laughs> we we certainly appreciate the help. And uh, But I encourage all of you to continue uh, to continue trying. Try, it's one word at a time. Build your vocabulary one word at a time. So so when we get ready for new, Happy New Year's, one Bon pour you hurus ani, and I, I hope I said that even somewhat close. I'm sure the the, the mischief speakers are going to give me a hard time here on online, uh, uh, or uh, New Year's Day. Uh, you know, jour d'ilan. Uh, that's how I would say. I I'm not sure that's how they would do it. Um, oh, I'm hearing nice try. <laughs> okay, all right. Thanks, Cindy. Okay, point is. The newsletters here. We want. We've tried to create this, and I thank Jeannie for the work they're doing to keep it in a practical speaking, just commentary speaking way that some of us at home might want to use this. We've also put in the newsletter, of course, things like the 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 around the, the New Year's. And, and you can visit the Machif Auto Li Auto Library to listen to the stories. So or listen to the story. So you know, please go to the if you want to listen to how to say these, we've created these these tools now for you at home. You know, click if you're watching tonight or you're watching later on, or you watch the recorded show after, click on the QR code, take your phone, take you to the landing page, you know, and listen to it. And there's, we've included some Métis holiday trans, trans traditions, pardon me in here. And again, um, these are just uh, some of the ways that the Métis history and culture was just like much what the Goulets were talking about. So, um, you know, uh, I won't go into all that now. Just, uh, just, just wanted to touch on some of these items. So, very proud of this tool, the document. It's available on our website. I just encourage you at home. Again, if you haven't seen it, it's available right on the website and the news section. You can click to it through the news. Now, a um, couple things. I, I just want to. We're getting down to the almost the end of the show. You know, uh, I will come back on a few things. There has been some politically tough issues we've been dealing with. I know tonight's been more of a, a lighter show on terms of some of the Christmas celebrations. I don't want to get into too much of this, but we did write, I, I was asked to, um, with our partner community in Terrace, uh, to write a letter to the editor in response to some in, inaccurate public statements. What I just want to say to all of us tonight, the Federation doesn't want to have to have this fight. We've, you know, we, I think we've all evolved to a really good place in terms of MNBC represents certain Métis people, we've figured, you know, we've been clear about our Métis representation. 
where we take issue with is the you know Métis Nation BC keeps saying stuff in the public where they say they describe themselves. It was in a it was in a in the Terrace Standard, a local paper, um, and they were um, writing about sort of acquiring some property. They've been provided some access to federal housing uh, investments, and that's great, fine. But they they keep saying things like the Métis Nation BC describes itself as a representative of Métis people under Section 35 of the Canadian Constitution, which, set, which sets out the Métis as being one of three indig recognized Indigenous groups. Well, they represent some of the people. And so we wrote a letter to the editor uh, as a request from our, our partner community, Skeena River Métis Community Association. If you get a chance, you can read it. You get a ju the gist of what we're trying to say. Like We're not saying they can't represent people. But we continue to ask them to be respectful that there's different leadership groups. And we don't say we represent MNBC citizens. We never have said that. We don't try and steal anyone from them. We just want to make sure that they understand there's, there's, we would appreciate that they need to say they're one of two provincial organizations. You know, we have concerns about the way they're buying these properties because it's very clear in Terrace, a lot of the local community wasn't aware of this purchasing thing and that's a governance issue for them to solve for themselves in their own organization it's not the way we would do it but that's up to make mnbc people to sort that out if they're okay with the provincial body just running around and buying properties without some sort of local resolution to support it well that's up to them i think that's dangerous that that reminds me of what got them into financial peril when they bought that school out in abbotsford years ago there was really no local engagement or decision-making process, good governance, and it led to some bad outcomes. Now they've found their way through that, but do they really want to be doing this all over the province and they're buying these multi-million dollar properties? We don't think that's responsible government and we think it's a very questionable process for public funding that they're getting access to. So, you know, I, don't, I won't belabor the issue. I just leave it at this. I just think that there needs to be some serious questions about that. So our, our you know, we're on the ground in Terrace all the time. We have a very active community with Skeena River Métis Community Association. We do cultural events. I know there's an MNBC chartered community there, but I don't, we don't see much of anything locally at all in terms of supporting culture. So I just say to people, we need to ask ourselves bef before we run out and buy multi-million dollar properties, is that the focus we should have when we have communities and families that can't even afford to put a hundred dollars of food in their fridge? Cause that's what we're dealing with. I can't imagine MNBC doesn't hear that. So I don't know. We just, I think it's, there needs to be some serious thought in that organization about, about those, those things. The other piece that I just will touch on is that we, we did respond to the BC government. They, they came out with this, this, this distinction based primer. And I'm definitely not going to go too much into this other than to say that, We've called on the minister, provincial minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation, Honorable Murray Rankin, like to task. I mean, distinction base means, you know, First Nation, Métis, Inuit, right? They're going to just, but what this document primer does is sort of suggest that, you know, there's no Métis rights in BC. And if there, even if there is, there's just some relationship in a loose knit way with Métis Nation BC. Well, again, that is not okay to us. And uh, so we've taken the task, the province, We've asked for a meeting. There's been no response yet. Um, I'm sure that they're not going to be a response because we know the province has treated Métis Section 35 aspirations. They just ignore it and hope we go away. Well, we're not going away. As most of you know, we've entered into to legal proceedings on addressing this matter and we'll have the courts decide. I believe we're going to have to bring the, the province to the table kicking and screaming. Um, we're not trying to get land and title away from First Nations, but we do... I believe I'm a Section 35 Métis person, even though I live in BC and my family's out in Saskatchewan. Like, I don't know what that exactly means in terms of rights, but does that mean I'm not a Section 35 Métis person? What do they mean? Like, I don't I don't understand this concept, how we let this happen at a time when the province continues to talk about reconciliation, yet they don't even reconcile this confusing approach on, on Métis uh, engagement or recognition in the province. We definitely know there's Métis people here. We're living proof of that. Our events are living proof of that. So anyways, we'll, let's just hope we can advance this in a, in a good, in a healthy way, but uh, I wouldn't hold our breath on that. So where are we now? Well, you know, the show's almost come to an end. I, I, I want to show one more video uh, uh, from our friend Renee, and I, I know I've completely messed up every time I've tried to find the one I was looking for. So I'm going to try and find one now. Um, and I'm going to try my best to hope they got the right one. And if not, well, I'm just going to play it and we're just going to roll with it for the one of the last songs of the evening. So uh, let's give it a shot.
nope, not that one. I was just doing that one. Sorry. See, you know, it just, I'm having one of those nights where it feels like when I want to go show something, it doesn't, it's just not the one thing I wanted to show. Well, we're going with the waltz. There it is, folks. Who knew I'd finally figure it out at the last? That's one of my... Renee has started doing that that song, and I just love the way he plucks the fiddle. I love how he... It's such a it's such a skill, and I know he makes it look so effortless, but I just want to say how much I really, really, really appreciate Renee's work on that and and, and how much... Uh, um, I just I just love watching when he does that and the, and it's just it's a very unique skill that I I have no musicality so yeah so what can I say well you know it's been it's been a really good year for us all you know and I know that we're all trying to make our way through you know um you know sometimes good times sometimes challenging times but I want to just end with you know with everyone tonight you know life is short life is precious you know Let's all just re hold our, our families close. Uh, let's let's give our kids extra hugs this Christmas. Uh, let's support our communities and let's just find ways to make sure that we all know each other matters. It doesn't matter if we have political differences. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, um, if we have uh, don't get along uh, it, perfectly like MNBC and us. But at the end of the day, we're still all connected. And I hope and my hope for 2024 is with you know, the Federation is going to continue to grow. Uh, we're going to continue to support our members. We're going to continue to care about all of you. And we hope that that we can just pro just propel that into another better place for all, all Métis people in BC. So I just want to, I know on behalf of our leadership, our staff, all of us, just thank you all of you for an amazing 2023. I hope you can see the progress. We're trying to do our best to help communities. We're trying to do our best to help one another. And I just hope you see that that's what really it's about. Um, you know, we all need a, we all need things in life, right? And I think as Métis, we're just trying to make sure our families don't forget who they are and where they come from and that we are an Indigenous people and that we count and, and we matter. So, you know, I just want to say to our to our Vice President Renee, our, our Treasurer, Earl Belcourt, our board members, whether it's Cindy or Louise um, or, or Roseanne, Elizabeth, our youth cup coming, Jordan, you know, uh, there's so many, and Jackie, there's just so many people that are working so hard behind me and how much I appreciate all of you. So please take care, everybody. Uh, we uh, we can all make this better, this place better with acts of kindness, acts of caring. And so let's just remember that this year as we head off for, get ready for 2024. And thank you, everyone. You know, don't forget about the opportunities we have coming up with the SPARK program and that, but just just really spend some time this Christmas, really hold your, hold your family close to you. Okay. With that, I just want to say thank you for being here tonight. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure to host all of you. I'm going to end the show with just a, a short um, um, a Christmas song and that'll be it. So good night, everyone. It's a pleasure being with you, Keith Henry, president of the BC Métis Federation. And I'm just really um, thankful for being with all of you tonight.
Welcome to the Métis Family Christmas Countdown. My name is Alice Kusterock. I'm from Coal Lake, Alberta. This is Colton Bear on the rhythm guitar from Edmonton, Alberta. We're going to play some traditional Métis fiddle tunes, a few Christmas carols as well. So let's have some fun. Feel free to jig, clap your hands, play some spoons. Let's have a Métis good time. <laughs> So let's play a couple. 